So we baked all our maps and we're satisfied with the way this looks. We're ready to start painting on this. And so I'll be running through a few techniques to aid you in the painting of your own oil can. So one of the first techniques I want to show you is to add some extra details using, using normal stamps in Substance Painter. Now this stage is best done first of all so that we can implement those normal maps into our original normal map. And to do that, we're going to go to our hard surfaces. Now, Substance Painter already comes with a lot of these pre-built, uh, but you can make your own and you can also download. There's a lot on the internet for you to download, but we're just going to use the ones that have come with Substance Painter. And to use these, what we're going to do is just create a new layer. And we're going to add paint to that, right click and add paint. And then we're going to go to our brush mode. So we've got our brush settings up here and we can scroll down. And we just want to turn off everything else other than normal. So we've got this normal map up here. And then what we can do is go through this and find a normal stamp that we like. So if I just select a random one like this here, we can grab that and drop it into the normal there. So now if we can increase our brush size, you can see we have that stamp in the brush. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the edges are fading off. That's because we've still got the alpha shape in here. So what we can do is just delete that alpha shape and then we should be left with something like this. And if we then click on our model, that normal detail will stamp right down into the surface of this. Now you've got a lot of different settings here, like size, you've got flow, spacing, stroke op opacity, and you've even got the angle of it here. But you can also adjust a lot of these by holding control on your keyboard and either holding left or right mouse button and moving to side to side or up and down. And also when you hold control, you'll get all the shortcuts appear on the screen. So we hold control and hold left mouse button and move side to side, we'll scale this. If we hold control and right mouse button and move side to side, we'll, we will be able to fade this alpha in and out. And that gives us a less strong stamp, but we want this to be on 100%, so I'm just gonna move that right up. Now, if we hold control and left mouse button and move up and down, we can rotate this. We also have different alignment modes here. So we can align it to tangent wrap, which is like a projection from front and left, we can also align it to the UVs. So if your UV is nice and neat, it's very easy to align to the UV. And that'll get a really neat um, projection, especially around corners that you've already planned out like this. So in this case, uh, with the tangent wrap, if we try to bake around a corner, we can get a little bit of stretching if we're not completely aligned with that corner. Um, but with the UVs on, we can get a really neat wrap around that corner. So it really is dependent on what kind of stamps you're gonna be doing on here. So for example, now I can go down to my normal and I can grab a, say like some sort of bolt like this, drop that in there, scale that down. I can go around the edge of this and just stamp these bolts in. Now, obviously the smaller it will get, the more jagged it will get because it is only supported by this map being 2K. You can increase it to 4K, that's absolutely fine. But generally something like this will probably only have a 1K map once it's in uh, scene anyway. Now you can hold shift if you click and then hold shift and move up and then click again, you can get a line of whatever stamp you have. And to change the spacing of that, simply go up to spacing and just increase the size of that. And you can see it at the top, the example of how much space will be in between the bolts. And we can get something like this. Now you can also double up on normal stamps as well. So for example, if I put this hatch on the front, I can then go and select maybe one of these vents and I can stamp that vent into there and then go around that with a bolt as well. Maybe I want some sort of clip actually rather than a bolt. And I'm just going to hold control and rotate that up and down. And you can go around the model, adding these kind of details in. For the most part, I like to keep the alignment on tangent wrap. I find it work best, especially on flat surfaces. 
And I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to this cap as well. So I'm gonna select something like this panel. And this time I'm gonna paint this onto the UV. So we'll go to the UV mode here. These two pieces are the top. So I'm just going to rotate this around 90, scale it down. And I'm just going to try to line this up as best as possible. So I'm going to click, hold shift, and then click again. So the spacing on that is a little bit too much. So I'm going to increase the spacing a little bit. Again, click. Okay, and I'm going to do the same for the bottom one as well. I just want to make sure the spacing is even around there because I've got to kind of guess where this will be here. So it might take a little bit of adjusting the spacing. This time it seems to have worked pretty well. And maybe I want to put something on the top of these caps as well. So for you, those of you doing the oil can competition, remember this doesn't need to be an oil can. It could be anything. Think outside the box. It could be a storage vessel for um, plasma. It could be maybe made of human skin. It could be plastic. It could be Diva's mech oil replacement kit. So it could be have stickers all over it of um, Hello Kitty or something like that. You really need to mess around with this and think outside the box and see what you can come up with because this is a great opportunity just to practice and mess around in Substance Painter. Okay, so now we, once we've done these normal details, if we go here and add a layer, okay, so for example, this time I'm just going to use a smart material. I'm just going to find something with chipped edges. So like steel painted. Now we can see that steel painted has found all them edges that we baked into our oil can but it hasn't found any of these new normal map edges that we've done. Uh, so this isn't really very good. We can put the normal map on top to show the normal map, but it's still not have it, uh, it's still not got any chipped edges on any of them details. So it looks kind of fake and plain. One thing we can do is if we right click this, we can add a filter and then in the filter, we can go down here and we can add a matte effects and that will find them edges. And this is okay, but you don't really get much options in the whirl level, and it doesn't go very small either. So if you just want something very subtle, it's it's kind of hard to get that. The other thing is it it's not actually using the underlying metal of your previous layers. It's using its own metal, which is quite bright and will look very different um, depending on what it is, what type of metal you are making. So a better way to do it, and the reason why we started off with a normal map is we can export this out and then re-import it and bake our other maps based on that normal map. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to go to, I'm going to delete our steel painted to make sure there's nothing else on there other than our normal details. I'm going to go to file, export textures, and I'm just going to export them as Unreal Engine 4, and I'm just going to make sure that they're in a folder. So in my folder, I'm just going to make a textures folder, and I'm just going to export that into the once that's done, I can open the folder. And then I'm going to delete everything else other than that normal map. And then what I'm going to do is grab that normal map and bring it back into Substance Painter. And then when this dialog box pops up, I'm going to change it to texture and then just do it for this session or even this project. So once I've got that in there, we should be able to find it. And you can see it's that second one there. So I want to make sure I don't get confused with the other one. And I want to go to texture set settings and I'm just going to delete that original normal map. So I'm going to hit X in the corner there. And then I'm going to grab our new one that we just re-imported and I'm going to drop that into the normal map slot there. 
Now, the first thing you'll notice is that all these normal details have just increased in intensity. That's because the normal de details now exist in our new normal map that we exported and then re-imported back in. So we no longer need these ones. So we can delete them and they'll go back down to the original intensity. We do not want to double up on that. Unless, for example, you just need that extra boost, but it's probably advised just to leave it as your original intensity. So we still won't be able to find the edges on everything. What we need to do is bake all the other maps based on this normal map. So when Substance Painter bakes, bakes stuff like this, it actually uses the normal map that it bakes first to generate a lot of this other stuff. So what we can do is come into here, tick off normal, and then regenerate the rest of these. I don't need the ID map. So we can regenerate the rest of these and it should regenerate them based on this normal map and include this new detail that we've done. So we can bake these default maps with normal map ticked off. So with these baked now, what we can do is hit B on the keyboard and we can go through these different maps and see what's been generated. So if we go through to the world space normal, we can see that that new normal detail is in there. If we hit B again, ID map, we don't have anything in that. I mean, occlusion has no extra details in it, but curvature does, and that's probably the most important one because that will define all our sharp edges. And to get back to our material, either hit M on the keyboard, or if you go up to the corner here, you can select material from the top. So we just shove another smart material on there. You'll see them details are now picked up. So if you do plan on adding any more uh, stamps from this point onwards make sure that you turn off all your other layers other than the stamp layer and export that normal map and then import it back in and that is how you incorporate normal stamps into your project to add a little bit more detail and variation that you didn't add in your original sculpt